The social values of our society, which has manifested in perpetual warfare, corruption, oppressive laws, social stratification, irrelevant superstitions, environmental destruction, and a despotic, socially indifferent, profit-oriented ruling class, is fundamentally the result of a collective ignorance of two of the most basic insights humans can have about reality. The emergent and symbiotic aspects of natural law. The emergent nature of reality is that all systems, whether it is knowledge, society, technology, philosophy, or any other creation, will, when uninhibited, undergo fluid, perpetual change. What we consider commonplace today, such as modern communication and transportation, would have been unimaginable in ancient times. Likewise, the future will contain technologies, realizations, and social structures that we cannot even fathom in the present. We have gone from alchemy to chemistry, from a geocentric universe to a heliocentric, from believing that demons were the cause of illness to modern medicine. This development shows no sign of ending, and it is this awareness that aligns us and leads us on a continuous path to growth and progress. Static, empirical knowledge does not exist. Rather, it is the insight of the emergence of all systems we must recognize. This means we must be open to new information at all times, even if it threatens our current belief system and hence identities. Sadly, society today has failed to recognize this and the established institutions continue to paralyze growth by preserving outdated social structures. Simultaneously, the population suffers from a fear of change, for their conditioning assumes a static identity, and challenging one's belief system usually results in insult and apprehension, for being wrong is erroneously associated with failure when, in fact, to be proven wrong should be celebrated, for it is elevating someone to a new level of understanding, furthering awareness. The fact is, there is no such thing as a smart human being, for it is merely a matter of time before their ideas are updated, changed, or eradicated. And this tendency to blindly hold on to a belief system, sheltering it from new, possibly transforming information, is nothing less than a form of intellectual materialism. The monetary system perpetuates this materialism not only by its self-preserving structures, but also through the countless number of people who have been conditioned into blindly and thoughtlessly upholding these structures, therefore becoming self-appointed guardians of the status quo. Sheep, which no longer need a sheepdog to control them, for they control each other by ostracizing those who step out of the norm. This tendency to resist change and uphold existing institutions for the sake of identity, comfort, power and profit is completely unsustainable and will only produce further imbalance, fragmentation, distortion and invariably destruction. It's time to change. From hunters and gatherers to the agricultural revolution, to the industrial revolution, the pattern is clear. It is time for a new social system which reflects the understandings we have today. The monetary system is a product of a period of time where scarcity was a reality. Now, with the age of technology, it is no longer relevant to society. Gone with the aberrant behavior it manifests. Likewise, dominant worldviews, such as theistic religion, operate with the same social irrelevancy. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and all of the others exist as barriers to personal and social growth. For each group perpetuates a closed worldview. And this finite understanding that they acknowledge is simply not possible in an emergent universe. Yet, religion has succeeded in shutting down the awareness of this emergence by instilling the psychological distortion of faith upon its followers, where logic and new information is rejected in favor of traditionalized, outdated beliefs. The concept of God 
is really a method of accounting for the nature of things. In the early days, people didn't know enough about how things formed, how nature worked, so they invented their own little stories. And they made God in their own image. A guy that gets angry. When people don't behave right, he creates floods and earthquakes. And they say it's an act of God. A cursory glance at the suppressed history of religion reveals that even the foundational myths themselves are emergent culminations, developed through influence over time. For example, a cardinal doctrine of the Christian faith is the death and resurrection of Christ. This notion is so important that the Bible itself states, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yet, it is very difficult to take this account literally, for not only is there no primary source denoting this supernatural event in secular history, awareness of the enormous number of pre-Christian saviors who also died and were resurrected, immediately puts the story in mythological territory by association. Early church figures such as Tertullian went to great lengths to break these associations, even claiming that the devil caused the similarities to occur, stating in the second century, the devil, whose business is to pervert the truth, mimics the exact circumstance of the divine sacraments. He baptizes his believers and promises forgiveness of sins. He celebrates the oblation of bread and brings in the symbol of the resurrection. Let us therefore acknowledge the craftiness of the devil who copied certain things of those that be divine. What is truly sad, however, is that when we cease the idea that the stories from Christianity, Judaism, Islam and all the others are literal history and accept them for what they really are, which are purely allegorical expressions derived from many faiths, we see that all religions share a common thread. And it is this unifying imperative that needs to be recognized and appreciated. Religious belief has caused more fragmentation and conflict than any other ideology. Christianity alone has 34,000 different subgroups. The Bible is subject to interpretation. When you read it, you say, I think Jesus meant this. I think Job meant that. Oh no, he meant this. So you have the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, and a church divided is no church at all. And a church divided is no church at all. And this point on division, which is a trademark of all theistic religions, brings us to our second failure of awareness, the false assumption of separation through the rejection of the symbiotic relationship of life. Apart from the understanding that all natural systems are emergent, where all notions of reality will be constantly developed, altered, and even eradicated, we must also understand that all systems are, in fact, invented fragments, merely for the sake of conversation. For there is no such thing as independence in nature. The whole of nature is a unified system of interdependent variables, each a cause and a reaction, existing only as a concentrated whole. You don't see the plug connected to the environment, so it looks like we're free, wandering around. Take the oxygen away, we all die immediately. Take plant life away, we die. And without the sun, all the plants die. So we are connected. We really must take into account the totality. This isn't just a human experience on this planet. This is a total experience. And we know we can't survive without plants and animals. We know we can't survive without the four elements, you know. And so when are we going to really start taking that into account? That's what it is to be successful. Success depends on how well we relate to everything around us. I'm very aware of the fact that my grandson cannot possibly hope to inherit a sustainable, peaceful, stable, socially just world unless every child today growing up in Ethiopia, in Indonesia, in Bolivia, in Palestine, in Israel also has that same expectation. You've got to take care of the whole community or you're going to have serious problems. And now we have to see that the whole world is the community. And we must all take care of each other that way. 
And it's not just a community of human beings. It's a community of plants and animals and elements. And we really need to understand that. That's what's going to bring us joy, too, and pleasure. That's what's missing in our lives right now. We can call it spirituality, but the fact of the matter is joy comes from that bliss of connectedness. That's our God spirit. That's that side of ourselves that really feels it. And you can feel it deep inside you. It's this amazing, wonderful feeling. And you know it when you get it. You don't get it from money. You get it from connection. Now, if that isn't a hazard to this country, how are we going to keep building nuclear weapons? You know what I mean? What's going to happen to the arms industry when we realize we're all one? <laughs> It's gonna fuck up the economy. The economy that's fake anyway. 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 <laughs> Which would be a real bummer. You can see why the government's cracking down on the idea of experiencing unconditional love. Once we understand that the integrity of our personal existences are completely dependent on the integrity of everything else in our world, we have truly understood the meaning of unconditional love. For love is extensionality, and seeing everything as you and you as everything can have no conditionalities. For, in fact, we are all everything at once. If it's true that we're all from the center of a star, every atom in each of us from the center of a star, then we're all the same thing. Even a Coke machine or a cigarette butt in the street in Buffalo is made out of atoms that came from a star. They've all been recycled thousands of times, as have you and I. And therefore, it's only me out there. So what is there to be afraid of? What is there that needs solace seeking? Nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of because it's all us. The trouble is we have been separated by being born and given a name and an identity and being individuated. We've been separated from the oneness and that's what religion exploits, that people have this yearning to be part of the overall one again. So they exploit that. They call it God. They say he has rules. And I think it's cruel. I think you can do it absent religion. It's time to claim the unity our outmoded social systems have broken apart and work together to create a sustainable global society where everyone is taken care of and everyone is truly free. Your personal beliefs, whatever they may be, are meaningless when it comes to the necessities of life. Every human being is born naked, needing warmth, food, water, shelter, everything else is auxiliary. Therefore, the most important issue at hand is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. This can never be accomplished in a monetary system, for the pursuit of profit is the pursuit of self-interest, and therefore imbalance is inherent. Simultaneously, politicians are useless, for our true problems in life are technical, not political. Furthermore, ideologies that separate humanity, such as religion, need strong reflection in the community in regard to its value, purpose, and social relevancy. Hopefully, through time, religion will lose its materialism and basis in superstition and move into the useful field of philosophy. The fact is, society today is backwards, with politicians constantly talking about protection and security rather than creation, unity, and progress. The U.S. alone now spends about $500 billion annually on defense. That is enough to send every high school senior in America to a four-year college. 
In the 1940s, the Manhattan Project produced the first true weapon of mass destruction. This program employed 130,000 people at an extreme financial cost. Imagine what our life would be like today if that group of scientists, instead of working on a way of killing people, worked on a way to create a self-sustaining, abundant world. Life today would be very, very different if that was their goal. Instead of weapons of mass destruction, it is time to unleash something much more powerful. Weapons of mass creation. Our true divinity is in our ability to create. And armed with the understanding of the symbiotic connections of life, while being guided by the emergent nature of reality, there is nothing we cannot do or accomplish. Of course, we face strong barriers in the form of established power structures that refuse to change. At the heart of these structures is the monetary system. As explained earlier, the fractional reserve policy is a form of slavery through debt, where it is literally impossible for society to be free. In turn, free market capitalism in the form of free trade uses debt to imprison the world and manipulate countries into subservience to a handful of large business and political powers. Apart from these obvious amoralities, the system itself is based on competition, which immediately destroys the possibility of large-scale collaborations for the common good, hence paralyzing any attempt at true global sustainability. These financial and corporate structures are now obsolete, and they must be outgrown. Of course, we cannot be naive enough to think that the business and financial elite are going to subscribe to this idea, for they will lose power and control. Therefore, peaceful yet highly strategic action must be taken. The most powerful course of action is simple. We have to alter our behavior to force the power structure to the will of the people. We must stop supporting the system. The only way the establishment will change is by our refusal to participate while continuously acknowledging its endless flaws and corruptions. They're not going to give up the monetary system because of our designs are what we recommend. The system has to fail and people have to lose confidence in their elected leaders. That will be a major turning point if the Venus Project is offered as a possible alternative. If not, I fear the consequences. The trends now indicate that our country is going bankrupt. The probability is our country will move toward a military dictatorship to prevent riots and complete social breakdown. Once the U.S. breaks down, all the other cultures will undergo similar things. As of now, the world financial system is on the brink of collapse due to its own shortcomings. The Comptroller of Currency stated in 2003 that the interest on the U.S. national debt will not be affordable in less than 10 years. This theoretically means total bankruptcy for the U.S. economy, and its implications for the world are immense. In turn, the fractional reserve-based monetary system is reaching its theoretical limits of expansion, and the banking failures you are seeing are just the beginning. This is why inflation is skyrocketing, all debt is at record levels, and the government and Fed are hemorrhaging new money to bail out the corrupt system. For the only way to keep the banks going is by making more money, the only way to make more money is to create more debt and inflation. It is simply a matter of time before the tables turn and there is no one willing to take new loans while defaults grow as people are unable to afford their current loans. Then the expansion of money will stop and contraction will begin on a scale never before seen, ending a century-long pyramid scheme. This has already begun. Therefore, we need to expose this financial failure for what it is, using this weakness to our advantage. Here are some suggestions. Expose the banking fraud. Citibank, JP Morgan Chase, and Bank of America are the most powerful controllers within the corrupt Federal Reserve System. It's time to boycott these institutions. If you have a bank account or a credit card with any of them, move your money to another bank. If you have a mortgage, refinance with another bank. If you own their stock, sell it. If you work for them, quit. 
This gesture will express contempt for the true powers behind the private banking cartel known as the Federal Reserve and create awareness about the fraud of the banking system itself. 2. Turn off the TV news. Visit the emerging independent news agencies on the internet for your information. CNN, NBC, ABC, Fox and all the others present all news pre-filtered to maintain the status quo. With four corporations owning all major media outlets, objective information is impossible. This is the true beauty of the internet and the establishment has been losing control because of this free flow of information. We must protect the internet at all times as it is truly our savior right now. 3. Don't ever allow yourself, your family or anyone you know to ever join the military. This is an obsolete institution now used exclusively for maintaining an establishment that is no longer relevant. U.S. soldiers in Iraq work for U.S. corporations, not the people. Propaganda forces us to believe that war is natural and the military is an honorable institution. Well, if war is natural, why are there 18 suicides every single day by American veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder? If our military men and women are so honored, why is it that 25% of the American homeless population are veterans? 4. Stop supporting the energy companies. If you live in a detached house, get off the grid. Investigate every means of making your home self-sustainable with clean energy. Solar, wind and other renewable energies are now affordable consumer realities and considering the never-ending rising cost of traditional energies, it will likely be a cheaper investment over time. If you drive, get the smallest car you can and consider using one of the many conversion technologies that can enable your car to be a hybrid, electric or run on anything other than establishment fuels. 5. Reject the political system. The illusion of democracy is an insult to our intelligence. In a monetary system there is no such thing as a true democracy and there never was. We have two political parties owned by the same set of corporate lobbyists. They are placed in their positions by the corporations with popularity artificially projected by their media. In a system of inherent corruption, the change of personnel every couple of years has very little relevance. Instead of pretending that the political game has any true meaning, focus your energy on how to transcend this failed system. And six, join the movement. Go to the zeitgeistmovement.com and help us create the largest mass movement for social change the world has ever seen. We must mobilize and educate everyone about the inherent corruption of our current world system, along with the only true sustainable solution declaring all the natural resources on the planet as common heritage to all people, while informing everyone as to the true state of technology and how we can all be free if the world works together rather than fights. The choice lies with you. You can continue to be a slave to the financial system and watch the continuous wars, depressions and injustice across the globe while placating yourself with vain entertainment and materialistic garbage or you can focus your energy on true, meaningful, lasting, holistic change which actually has the realistic ability to support and free all humans with no one left behind. But in the end, the most relevant change must occur first inside of you. The real revolution is the revolution of consciousness and each one of us first needs to eliminate the divisionary, materialistic noise we have been conditioned to think is true, while discovering, amplifying, and aligning with the signal coming from our true empirical oneness. It is up to you. What we are trying in all these discussions and talks here is to see if we cannot radically bring about a transformation of the mind, not accept things as they are, 
but to understand it, to go into it, to examine it. Give your heart and your mind with everything that you have to find out, a way of living differently. But that depends on you and not somebody else. Because in this there is no teacher, no pupil, there is no leader, there is no guru, there is no master, no saviour. You yourself are the teacher and the pupil, you are the master, you are the guru, you are the leader. You are everything. And to understand is to transform what is. <laughs>